the same number of atoms of each, each atoms of each kind on both sides of the equation. So in other words there, and when we look at the chemical reaction equation, the first thing that we need to look at is how many atoms of each kind do we have on both sides of the equation. If we don't have enough, uh, equal amount uh, of the atoms of each kind, then we have to do something to balance it. So looking at this particular chemical reaction equation, you burn carbon in the presence of oxygen gas and air, you generate carbon dioxide. Is this equation balanced? We've got one carbon on the left, one carbon on the right, or one mole of carbon on the left, one mole of carbon on the right. We've got two oxygen atoms on the left, two oxygen atoms. So sometimes the chemical reaction is balanced when you write them out. Okay? But you still, you want to do that inspection. You want to make sure that there is equal number of each atom on both sides of the equation. <coughs> so on the reaction side, you count the total number of carbon atoms. On the product side, you count the total number of carbon atoms. You do the same thing for the oxygen atoms there. So from here, we can say, well, this equation is balanced. Okay? So that's what we mean by balancing the chemical reaction. And you are doing a simple inspection, trying to do a bookkeeping of different number of atoms on both sides of the equation. If you end up with the same number of uh, uh, atoms uh, of each kind uh, on both sides, then you have a balanced equation. Now you have to make sure, before you can do any calculation involving the chemical reaction equation, you have to make sure it's balanced to begin with. If it's not balanced, then you can't use that equation to do your calculation simply because that sentence is incorrect or incomplete. So the first thing you all, uh, the first thing you need to do is always check the equation, make sure it's balanced. Okay, so balancing the equation by inspection. Chem is tried, so let's try this equation. Is this equation balanced? Well, we have carbon monoxide, magnets dioxide, magnets oxide on the other side, and carbon dioxide. Well, let's do a book here. So we have carbon. We have um, magnates. We have oxygen. Okay, do the same thing on the other side of the equation there. Carbon, magnates, oxygen. How many carbon do we have on the left side? How many carbon do we have on the right side? Okay. Magnates, MN. Oxygen. <coughs> Equation balance? Yes. Of course. Well, unfortunately, things are not always this easy. Let's try this thing. What's the name of the first compound? I know I promise you I won't test you on this for the in-class exam. However, you need to know. what's the name of the compound? Nitrate. 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 Thank you. <coughs> so polyatomic ions, the 16, one of the 16 polyatomic ions. There, you have to know the polyatomic ions. You have to know their formula. You have to know their name. You have to know their charge. What's the charge on the copper atom? Nitrate. Well, nitrate is. We don't know the charge. Mm, nitrate polyatomic ions. We ask you to memorize it. Nitrate NO3 bears. Negative one. one negative charge, so you have two of them. So what's the charge for copper? Plus two. Plus two. Okay. So just checking to see if you are um, finishing the homework assignment uh, for the questions in the uh, in chapter two there. So that's what you need to be able to do. Given the formula there, you need to be able to determine the charges for the uh, species involved in there. And some of the uh, uh, some of the things that you have to memorize, like this NO three. You have to know NO3 is called nitrate. It bears one negative charge. And if you have two negative charges there, copper has to bear two positive charges in this case in order to give you a no net charge compound formula. Okay. So is this equation balanced? Well, we got one copper on both sides, so, so copper is balanced. How many nitrogen do we have on the left side? Two. Okay. How many do we have on the right? So that's not balanced. And on the left side, you have two nitrogen. You get one on the right. So that is not balanced. Oxygen atoms. Six. 
Six on the left. Five. Five. So oxygen is not balanced. Okay. So if you do a balancing equation, well, there are different ways to balance chemical reaction equations. And the most basic fundamental way is to do an inspection. Just check the total number of each atoms on both sides there and uh, try to manipulate the coefficient in front of each atom, uh, in front of each uh, chemical there. And when you make changes there, your ultimate goal is to make sure that you have equal number of atoms on both, of each, uh, atoms of each kind on both sides. So in this case, we have copper nitrate, and we end up with copper oxide, we end up with nitrogen dioxide, we end up with oxygen gas. Okay, so I'm not going to put the uh, the state <coughs> of the matter in there. Solid, solid, gas, and gas, and we're not going to put it in there. So we have one carbon, uh, one copper, two nitrogen, and six oxygen, and we have one copper, one nitrogen, and five oxygen in here. So you know it's not 50 there. Okay. So five oxygen. Now, copper is already balanced. Nitrogen is not. What do we need to do to balance nitrogen? You have to multiply the NO2 term. You put a two in here. Now, if you put a two in there, that will give you two nitrogen. So nitrogen is balanced. And when you put a two in front of this compound, you are also doubling the amount of oxygen in that compound. So two times two, that's four. Four plus two, that's six. Six plus one, seven. seven. <coughs> so now we have seven oxygen. Well, with the first trial, we put a two in front of NO2. We balance the copper, we balance nitrogen. Now the only thing left is oxygen. We have to have equal number of oxygen as well on both sides of the equation. You have six on the left side, you have seven on the right side. Now one trick when you do the balancing there is that if you see a single atom, well, if you see an atom in a formula that has an odd number on either side of the equation, you try to make that odd number an even number. Okay? Now, there is no general rule about how to do that. This is by trial and error. You just look at it and say, well, this is seven, that is six. You try to make the number seven an even number there. And if you change any of these, if you make changes, if you put a number in, any of the, in front of any of these two chemicals there, you still end up with an odd number. There's no, whatever you do here, as long as you don't change this one, you always end up with an odd number. So what we can do in this case is that, well, if we put a two in front of this compound, I need a little bit more room to write the number here. Okay. Now that will give you four, six, eight, total of eight oxygen. There. So that's the first step there. When you end up with an odd number versus even number there. And the first thing you want to do is try to make that odd number, whichever atom, whichever side it's on for that particular atom, 